Hey guys, so I've been getting a lot of questions about how to do drop-down terminals and scratch pads in i3. Um, I actually had a video on these, like, well not really on these, but I mentioned how to do them a long time ago, but I figure it's worth, since I get so many questions about it, it's worth actually going into detail how it works. Um, so I have two drop-down terminals, or scratch pad terminals, on my machine. So in i3, uh, you can set it up so that there are certain windows that are hidden from view, they're still there, and you can pull them up whenever you want. So it's really convenient. So I have one here, so this is, I have a Tmux window that I hide automatically. Um, sometimes I'll run updates, sometimes I'll, you know, update, uh, get my mail or something like that. Uh, so that's one of my terminals. Uh, and, and basically how it works, how it works, you know, on the user side is whenever I press mod U, this terminal comes up. Uh, when I press mod U again, it hides. Uh, so you don't close it like a normal terminal. You use, you know, whatever key binding you assign to hide it or show it. Uh, so I can bring that up on any screen I want. Um, and I have another drop-down terminal, so to speak, another scratch pad terminal, and that's basically for arithmetic. So if I press mod A, this is actually just the terminal that's running R, so I can type in something, or you can run Python or something else. Um, just to, if I need to do arithmetic, if I'm doing something else, and I don't want to have to bring up another window and tile it in place or something, it's just way easier to do it this way. Um, so how do you do this in i3? Um, so i3, let me open up my config. Uh, let me go to where you actually do this. So the idea behind it, the idea behind the scratch pad in i3 is basically it's just a hidden window that has a bunch of stuff that you can hide on it and then you can choose what to reveal on it you know choose to move whatever you want on the screen that you actually have um, so right now these two windows if I hide them they're just in a place that I can't see um, and when I press the buttons to reveal them they're just moving to whatever window I'm on or uh, you know the workspace I'm on um, so let me show you how to do this so how the command actually works is well, when I start up my system, what I do is I have it automatically create a terminal window with the name of dropdown, right? So in different terminal emulators, if you look at, you know, your manual or whatever, for whatever terminal emulator you have, there's usually some way of giving your terminal a name. Now, you don't see this name usually, but uh, the system sees it. And so what I do here is I have it um, generate a terminal with the name dropdown. And all the other commands that are required to run a scratch pad or a drop down uh, terminal, uh, you know, work up to the fact that it's actually named that. So, what do I tell it to do? So, if you just start a window generally in i3, it's just going to pop up in tile. Um, so, I give it specific commands for what to do with this actual drop down terminal. Um, first, I want it to float, so it floats. Um, then I want to resize it to that particular size. That's just, I pretty much chose it randomly. I could probably increase it or decrease it. Third, I want it to actually be a scratch pad item. So you just say move scratch pad. And that's also going to make it disappear. Um, and then I also like giving it like a wider border just because I want it to be a little more visible, right? Um, so that's all I do, right, for actually setting up the scratch pad. So whenever I start i3, it's going to generate a terminal, and it's going to hide it, it's going to give it all those properties, it's going to be floating, etc., etc. Now what you do is, you, uh, what I do is just assign a shortcut to show that specific terminal. Um, so usually you use the command just scratch pad show, and that shows everything on the scratch pad, um, but I specifically use um, uh, this thing here, so instance dropdown, to say I only want that thing on the scratch pad that's named dropdown, right? So this command is going to show it, and um, this, oh, I, actually this part of it, it's not necessary, but I, oh, it's important to have, I guess. Uh, since I want mine totally centered, uh, this command just makes sure, make sure that it's actually in the middle, right? So if you, it will hypothetically, if I didn't include this, um, and I refreshed I th I3, uh, the terminal, whenever you refresh i3, all the floating terminals move away. It's actually a little annoying. So that little line there actually just gets rid of that. Let me go back. Um, so that's pretty much all you have to do in terms of the lines you have to have. Uh, you can set this to whatever binding you want. Uh, again, I have it set to mod u just because I wasn't using u for anything. Like, um, and then you just have whatever settings you want. The only one that are, ones that are really necessary uh, well, the only one that's really necessary is the scratch pad one, although usually you're going to want to have a floating terminal, uh, just in case. 
Um, now you can also have it run other specific commands if you want it to move. Let's say you want it in the uh, right corner or something like that. You can use the move command or anything like that. Um, and all, everything works. You can basically just choose any i3 command to run on this. Um, so there are a couple other things that I do. Um, so as I mentioned, I have the arithmetic terminal at mod A, which pretty much I set up the same way. Um, although I, I do like giving them specific uh, traits, so I like having my math terminal. I like to have the font a little bit bigger, because when I have that thing pulled up, I'm going to be focused on that. I don't necessarily want it to be super small. Um, so you can set though you can usually set the, those kind of settings in uh, the actual command to start the terminal, right? So here I name it math, and the font I want it to have is mono of the size 24, right? Um, and of course this is just a normal i3 command. I tell it to run r, and q is just for quiet, so it doesn't print about a bunch of stuff like welcome to r. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, again, all you need is these couple lines. They're on, on my configs on GitHub. Um, and you can play around with this in the way you want. Again, you can put these windows wherever you want. You can have any number of them, as long as you remember to name them a different thing and map that name to a different command. Um, so you can play around with this a whole lot. There's a lot you can do. But uh, anyway, hope you learned something. I'll see you guys next time.